So why does asymptotic analysis actually matter in the real world, right? We learnt of all these notations like big O, big theta, big omega, small o, small omega, all of these, right? But the more fundamental question is why? Why does all of this matter in the real world? So I'll give you a very, very simple explanation so that you're convinced that asymptotic analysis is one of the most important concepts and ideas when we are designing any algorithm, right? So let me show it to you. So imagine, imagine I have a problem. This could be a problem of sorting, searching, whatever the problem is, right? We'll see many, many problems as we progress through the course. So let's say the number of inputs, right, to that problem is 10 power 3, which is 1000, right? This is basically a thousand. Let's assume it's sorting just for simplicity because we have seen some sorting algorithms. If we have to sort thousand items, versus 10 power 6 is a million items, 10 power 9 is a billion items, right? And these numbers are not uh, some crazy numbers, right? Thousand is a very, very common thing. Even million is not so unheard of, right? For example, let me give you an example. A million is not such a big number because typically on for internet companies, right? Typically for internet companies like Google, Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, etc. Million is actually a very small number because these are these are typically like the number of queries that they that they see on a regular basis even a billion is not such a large number because on facebook there are billions of customers there are billions of customers on facebook right similarly there are billions of interactions there are billions of interactions of people with google search there are billions of queries and billions of people who use tools like uh, facebook google youtube amazon right? Amazon certainly not billions of people, but there are certainly billions of interactions. Amazon sees hundreds of millions of customers on a regular basis, right? So these numbers, especially for internet companies and governments, look at governments like India and China, where the population is over a billion, right? So for any sort of identification that these government, some identity cards that these governments might issue, a billion is not unheard of because there are already more than a billion people in India and China. Similarly, hundreds of millions are also not unheard of because there are lots of countries like US, right, which have hundreds of millions of citizens. So governments, internet companies and data sets, look at how many data sets you have, right? Look at the number of pages on Wikipedia that we have. The number of pages on the internet is in billions, right? So this is not unheard of numbers. These are very common numbers at internet scale and for large governments or large countries, right? So I'm not thinking of some uh, unimaginably large numbers, okay? These numbers are seen by internet companies and large countries on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if the input size is 1000 versus a million versus a billion, imagine if I have a sorting algorithm. Imagine, I'm not saying there is a sorting algorithm with these time complexities. Imagine, imagine the problem I'm trying to solve is sorting. It could be any problem for that matter. I'm just taking sorting as an example, right? If there was a sorting algorithm that could sort in login, unfortunately, there is none. Okay. So imagine if whatever problem, whatever problem that we want to solve, it could be sorting, searching, uh, tons of other problems in uh, like finding the shortest path from one location to other location. There are tons of problems in algorithms that we we'll learn of. For the given problem, this is my input size. So these three are my input sizes. And to solve that problem, let's assume my time complexity is login. Right? Order of login or theta of login, right? Versus n. Suppose I have algorithm one, which can solve this problem in log, log n. I have algorithm two that can solve the problem in order of n. I have algorithm three that can solve it in order of n log n. Let's assume I have algorithm four that can solve it in n square. And I have algorithm five that takes two par n time. Now, to get a real sense of what this means is, I mean, to, we have to understand, right? Okay, all these are some mathematical functions, but let's get it in terms of things that we understand, right? In terms of time, we understand what one hour is, we understand what a day is, we humans, right? Commonly, we understand what a week is, what a month is, what a year is, and all the time since Big Bang, right? From the, from the beginning of the universe, right? So we understand what one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year, one decade, one century mean actually in the real world, right? So let's translate these into into times that we understand, that we live every day, that we can easily correlate. Imagine, imagine I have a problem. So for this problem, let's assume I have an algorithm A1 that can solve it in log n time. 
which means if I have an input of size 10 power 3, right, log n will be 9.96. Similarly, if, I, if my input is 10 power 6, my log n would be 19.93. If you wonder how I got it, it's very simple. I just use Google. On Google, you can say LG 10 power 3 and you would get log base 2 on Google. Right? Very simple. Similarly, you can compute any of these functions on Google. Okay? I just got these numbers by just doing a simple Google search. Right? Now, imagine, imagine. So, these are basically, for my algorithm A1, these are the number of steps, asymptotically speaking. Right? Asymptotically speaking. These are the number of operations that I have to perform. Like, roughly about 10 operations I have to perform to, to basically solve my problem if the input size is 10 power 3 and if I am using algorithm 1. Similarly, if I'm using algorithm 2, which has a time complexity of, let's say, order of n, if the input size is 10 power 3, I need to perform 10 power 3 operations. If for algorithm 3, the time complexity is n log n, right? For an input of size 10 power 3, I need to perform 9965.78 operations. So I just filled this matrix. I left these two blank. I'll tell you why. Now imagine each operation. Now imagine each operation. Imagine each operation takes one nanosecond. What is a nanosecond? A nanosecond is 10 power minus 9 seconds. Or in other words, it's one billionth of a second. There are a billion nanoseconds. B for Bombay, right? B for, B for uh, Bermuda, right? B for Berlin, okay? That B, not, not, not anything else, okay? So, if you have a billion nanoseconds you have a billion nanosecond in one second so you have one billion nanoseconds you have one billion nanoseconds in one second okay this is a, i mean to get for you to get a sense of it right so now now and why you might wonder why did it take one nanosecond for each operation because actually most modern computers can actually perform any of the simple operations like comparison and all of them in roughly about a nanosecond or sometimes even less than a nanosecond, right? Like maybe one tenth of a nanosecond, etc. But I'm just taking nanosecond because this is the speed at which typical operations can be executed on modern computer processors. Of course, processor, processors are getting faster every day, right? But typically, you can think of this as a rough approximation. You can think of this as a rough approximation. Now think about it this way. So let's take an example, right? <clears throat> what does 1R mean? 1R basically means 3.6 into 10 power 12 nanoseconds. Okay. So if you think about it, imagine if I have an algorithm, let's say A4, which can solve my problem, whatever problem I have, let's assume it is using its time complexity is order of n square. Let's assume its time complexity is order of n square. Now, if I give it a billion data points, look at this. If I give it a billion data points, how much time does it take to actually solve my problem if its complexity is n square? 10 power 18 operations, right? If each operation is one nanosecond, it will take 10 power 18 nanoseconds to finish it. And what does 10 power 18 nanoseconds mean? Look at this. What is one year? One year is 3 into 10 power 16 nanoseconds. This is, this is still significantly less than this, right? Look at this. 10 power 18 versus 3 into 10 power 16. Okay, so here, if you multiply this with roughly again 3, if you multiply this with 30, okay, if you multiply this with 30, you'll get this roughly approximately. Okay, I'm just making some approximations here, right? So, what does that mean, right? Which means you need 30 years, roughly approximately. I'm making some approximations here. So, if you have an input size of 1 billion uh, data points or 1 million values, and if you have to solve your problem with input size of a billion points, and if each, each operation takes one nanosecond, if you have an algorithm A4 whose complexity is order of n square, you would need 30 years to solve that problem. That is massive if you think about it. Now imagine if you have an algorithm A5 that actually takes 2 power n time. Its complexity is 2 power n. For Even for an input of just 1000 inputs, Right, even for just thousand inputs, you need one. Just round this off. It is basically ten power three zero one. Right, if you round this off, just ignore the point zero seven. These many nanoseconds is what you need to solve it. Since Big Bang, which is thirteen point seven billion years away, okay. Since Big Bang, we only have seen 
फोर पॉइंट थ्री इंटू टेन पार ट्वेंटी सिक्स नैनो सेकेंड्स राइट सो दिस इज इंपॉसिबल इवन इफ यू वेट फॉर ऑल द टाइम इन द यूनिवर्स राइट अगेन यूर वी मेकिंग सम एजम्शन दट दीज आर द नंबर ऑफ ऑपरेशन एंड दिस इज ट्रू राइट टू पार थाउजेंड इज दिस टू पार थाउजेंड इज टेन पार थ्री हंड्रेड वन एंड इफ ईच ऑपरेशन टेक्स वन नैनो सेकेंड विच इज नॉट अ वेरी क्रेजी एजम्शन because most operations take a nanosecond or maybe 1/10th or maybe even 100th of a nanosecond look at the exponent here you have 301 here and you have 26 here right so to solve real world problems as your complexity increases right i mean if i have to pick between these algorithms of course i'll pick a1 because a1 can give me solutions for example look at this for a for a for an input of size a billion observations or billion points i'm just taking 30 nanoseconds to solve it versus even this is large right look at this what is this 3 into 10 par 10 what is 3 into 10 par 10 3 into 10 par 10 nanoseconds we know 10 par 9 nanoseconds we know 10 par 9 nanoseconds is 1 second right now what this is nothing but 30 into 10 par 9 right so which means this is 30 seconds right so if you if you think about it that's 30 seconds right so if you have a billion inputs right a log n algorithm if you have an input of size a billion data points a log n algorithm is solving it in 30 nanoseconds approximately while an algorithm that is n log n will take 3 seconds so will take 30 seconds to answer will take 30 seconds to answer imagine if it's an internet company that is searching for a product or searching for a person's profile Okay, let's assume this is Google search. Google search sees billions of queries that people ask every day, billions and billions of queries that Google sees, unique queries people Google sees over a month's time. If Google is searching through all of their history of queries, thirty second. Look at this. This is sorry. This this is thirty second, right? Nobody will wait for thirty seconds for Google to give you a result. People want it in like you give you press enter within a within a millisecond, right? or within under a second under 1 second we want the answers if you are asked to wait for 30 seconds nobody will right so and this is un, this is not unheard of 10 power 9 size or billion size data sets are very very common today in the world of internet and for large countries right so if you if you have an identity card let's say let's say you have an identity card right let's assume you have an identity card number given by your government assuming that you are living in china or india right suppose you go and give your identity card number and let's assume it can it can verify your name your date of birth everything in log n time which means it's taking literally 30 nanoseconds to search for that person's identity and validate versus if the algorithm if you are using to solve the same uh, identity verification thing instead of a1 if you use a3 it will take 30 seconds per person 30 seconds versus 30 nanoseconds that's the difference right if you have an identity card if, if if a government agent or a government person has to verify your identity 30 seconds is a lot of time so in such situations and this is not unheard of india and china has these populations so it's very very apt to use to not use an algorithm that is n log n in this situation and to actually use something which is order of log n even order of n is non trivial right this is one second people may not even want to wait one second okay people want it like within a few milliseconds sometimes that's the speed at which you have to operate in the modern world right so the whole asymptotic analysis that we learned is super important because it helps us pick the right algorithm for the right problem by just knowing what the time complexity is i can have a rough estimate on how much time it will take for me by making some simple assumptions like this and we always want the fastest algorithm right given that it meets all other criteria we want the fastest algorithm to solve our problem and to do that what do we do we pick the algorithm which has the lowest asymptotic uh, order right suppose if i have to solve a problem if i have all of them and all these algorithms satisfy other business requirements i would pick an algorithm that is order of log n because it's going to solve my problem super fast as compared to even n or n log n or n square or 2 power n of course 2 power n is crazy never never ever solve problems which require 2 power n because this can be crazy even as your size increases slightly this will kill you literally again we'll learn about what why 2 par n is dangerous little later in algorithms there is this whole idea called np hard np complete etc we'll come to that little later 
But for now, this is how asymptotic analysis really matters when you're designing algorithms to solve real world problems, like verifying identities, sorting, finding routes from one place to other place, and searching for people in a database, searching for products, recommending products, Google search, Facebook friend recommendation, all of these things depend on using the algorithms with the right asymptotic order.